Yes. Motion is approved. 7.4 is informational presentation on the proposed TIF District 2022-1. This is the Big M building. The Big M LLC and Epic Companies have filed a tax increment financing application known as a TIF with the City of Minot to completely rehabilitate the Big M building located at 123 First Street Southwest in downtown Minot. The rehabilitation will provide a variety of commercial and residential uses within the building. And we do have some folks from Epic Properties here this evening as well to uh, give us a presentation and provide some further information about the Big M project. Uh, actually, before we start with that, we'll, uh, I'll turn things over to our city manager perhaps for some information and then we'll move on to our folks from Epic. You're welcome to come up and start getting ready, but before we get going, I just wanted to lay the foundation for the conversation a little bit tonight, and that is tonight's purpose is strictly to be informational, presentational. Uh, we're not asking the council or the community to make any decisions tonight. Uh, but we did want to provide information to the council and to the public with regards to TIF and how it works and the, and the specifics to this project. Uh, this will also be followed up with presentations to our community partners, uh, that being the school district and the county commission here over the next couple of weeks as they have a role to play in this project as well. Uh, but again, we wanted to provide some opportunity. We anticipate that this will come forward to the council for action next month in May. So there should be plenty of time to ask questions and get information. So hopefully the council and the public can be informed on this uh, important decision on behalf of the community. So with that, I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, likely come back to you for some uh, questions a little bit later on, Mr. City Manager, our Community Development Director, Brian Billingsley. Thank you, Mayor Sittman. Good evening to you and the members of the council. Um, so Harold pretty much covered my first slide. Uh, basically, this is an informational presentation. We're not asking for any motions to be taken tonight, any decisions to be made. Uh, there is a public hearing that will have to be held uh, sometime during the month of May, and we cannot make a decision until that public hearing has been held. Um, to give you some background on the history of this building, it was built in 1962, occupied by 1963. Um, it has a history being used for a bank building and is for also for an office building. From what I've heard, it's been closed for nearly 20 years now. Uh, current conditions, many of you have toured the building as it was under consideration to be used as our future city hall. Um, but uh, just doing a walk around of the building, uh, you'll see boarded up windows, uh, cracking concrete, even uh, some graffiti that's been tagged on, onto the building. Um, I, I didn't was not, was not able to get inside the building for pictures, but like I said, many of you have already viewed the inside, and the inside needs a lot of work as well. Um, the proposal is to completely remodel and rehabilitate this building inside and out. Um, in the basement, there will be parking, utilities, uh, exercise room and storage. The first two floors will contain about 9,000 square feet of commercial space. Floors three through six will have one and two bedroom apartments. There will be a grand total of 31 apartments proposed on floors three through six. And then floors seven and eight will be uh, two bedroom condominium units. There will be a grand total of eight uh, condominium units within the building. Um, I, I attached to the agenda the, the state's urban renewal law, which you'll find on the left here, and the, the city's urban renewal plan and general development for the city uh, that was adopted by the city council in 2009. These are the, the documents that we use to guide our decisions on TIF districts. And uh, I, I'm not gonna go through those in great detail tonight, but I did attach those both documents to the agenda for you and the general public to review. Uh, for, to become eligible for a TIF district, um, one or more slum or blighted areas or industrial commercial properties need to exist within the municipality. And then the city council also has to make a finding that the, the development or the rehabilitation, conservation or redevelopment uh, or a combination thereof of the area or the properties is necessary in the interest of the public economy, health, safety, morals and welfare of the residents of the city of Minot. In this situation, the Big M, it would fall under rehabilitation since the building already exists. This is not a new development project. So this is, a, this is we would consider this building to be blighted and in need of re rehabilitation. Um, in order to adopt a development renewal plan, 
Uh, public notices will have to be sent out to the following organizations. Um, they'll have to be posted in the local newspaper like we do with all land use cases that, that go before the city council for review and approval. Uh, we have to mail notices to all competitors. We've identified approximately 32 competitors to this project. A competitor would be considered uh, a similar project in nature. Uh, it would have commercial uses on the bottom floors of the building and residential uses on the upper floors of the building. So we have identified those competitors already. We're ready to mail out the notices when we get the clearance from the city and the county, from the, excuse me, the county and the, uh, and the school district on, on their, on, on how they're gonna handle the, the, the proposed TIF. And then we have to mail public notices, public hearing notices to Ward County, Minot Public Schools and the Minot Park District. Um, when this goes before the council in May for a public hearing, there actually is two public hearings. The first is on the development and renewal plan, and the second is on the development agreement for the proposed project. Uh, Mayor Sipma, you can hold both public hearings simultaneously. We did that with the Blue on Broadway TIF, so you're more than welcome to, to do both hearings at the same time when this is posted for, uh, for a hearing in May. Um, the TIF is adopted by resolution. Uh, the development renewal plan is attached to the council resolution as an exhibit. And then the development agreement is signed by both parties. And then uh, the city uh, must file that, that uh, development or renewal plan with the State Department of Commerce. And we also have to submit an annual report to the Department of Commerce every July. Um, the length of the TIF, um, it's, the Century Code gives some guidance on, on how long a TIF can be, can be granted for. There's a cap of 25 years, by the way. A TIF cannot be any longer than 25 years. Um, if the TIF is no more than five years, it can, it can strictly just be approved by the City Council. And if it's approved by the City Council, then the, pro, then, then the TIF is in effect for all taxing uh, entities uh, within our jurisdiction. If it goes beyond uh, five years, we are required to send a letter to the chairman of the county commission and the president of the, of the school board. Um, and they, they have 30 days to, to review the proposal and to state in writing their approval or denial of the project if they, uh, if, if the school board or the county commissioners do not support the TIF, they're welcome to write us and let us know what they do not support and they also can let us know whether or not they're willing to negotiate the terms of, of the TIF. Um, those letters were mailed to both jurisdictions on the 23rd of March. They have received them. So the 30-day period is, is underway right now and the, it will expire sometime around the end of this month. And uh, I do know that uh, EPIC is gonna be going to both organizations to give presentations and explain how this TIF is gonna work. <coughs> Um, just to give some background information, this is not the first TIF that we've approved in the city. We, the city council approved a TIF for the new Blue on Broadway building uh, in 2020. And that TIF went to pay for the, the, the road improvements that you see here on First Street Southwest. Um, if you recall, this road was really more like an alley. It didn't really resemble a road. Uh, the, the TIF helped pay for the widening of the road, the curb gutter, the sidewalk, the street lights, the fire hydrants, all the improvements you see in the right of way helped were, were funded through the TIF and the developer. It was a five year TIF. Um, uh, the base assessment at the time was about a little over $900,000 for the land. Um, it's currently assessed at the same value at 911,000. Uh, the building in 2021 was assessed at about 2.3 million uh, so the total assessed value now is, stands at 3.243 million, but just to let you know, that is not the final value of the, of the building. That's the building was still under construction at the time these numbers were taken, so it's probably going to go even higher. So what you need to know is that in, in tax collection years 2022 through 2026, the governing bodies of the city, the county, the schools, and the parks will continue to receive the property taxes generated from the 2019 base assessment. The other, the, the other taxes that uh, are gonna come in from the current assessed value 
will be will go towards paying off the uh, the bonds that were issued for this project, and uh, I have a, a an estimate here. The TIF would cover about four hundred twenty thousand dollars of those road improvements, and the developer is going to cover the remaining two hundred eighty thousand dollars. So uh, Dave Lakefield is here. He can answer your questions if you have any questions about the financial ends of TIFs and, and, and the bonding requirements. Um, also, Todd Burning, Blake Nybachin from Epic Companies are here. I, I know Blake told me he'd like to, to, to say a few words. And then their attorney, John Shockley, who is very familiar with uh, representing developers and local government on TIF proposals, he's here as well to answer any questions. So if there, you have any questions on what I've presented, I'd be happy to, to answer them right now. Thank you, Mr. Billingsley. Any questions for our Community Development Director, Alderman Olson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So clarify this for me, Ryan, because I'm trying to get my head wrapped around it. Um, when it comes to the other taxing authorities, the county and the school district, do they have to approve it as well, or it is approved at this level and they're just informed, or how, how does that all work? Okay. Mayor Sitma, uh, Alderman Olson, uh, the notice that we sent to this to the county and the school district, basically they, they have the ability to opt out on their end, okay. but they can't kill it on our end. And so for example, if one organization says, yes, we're going to uh, participate, then, they, then they, will, they will opt out of the, receiving the taxes. If they do not want to participate, then, then they'll still receive the full amount of taxes that are gonna be paid throughout the 20 year period. All right, thank you. Okay. Mr. City Manager. If I can follow up on that. They do have the option to opt out, but that could potentially jeopardize the project because then the numbers may not work as far as the revenue is necessary, but we'll talk more about that here in the near future. Yep. So it wouldn't necessarily veto the project, but it may make the project unworkable that it wouldn't proceed at that point. Yep. Further questions, Alderwoman Olson. And just to follow up, um, is that any public school district that's represented within the city limit of Minot because I believe we have more than one or is how, how does that work? Uh, Mayor Sitma, Alderwoman Olson, uh, my understanding is it's only the, the, the district that that property pays property taxes to. So it, it's wouldn't, I don't think it would affect any of the other school districts in the neighbor, in the, in the area. Okay, thank you. Just, just the one that they pay property taxes to, which would be Minot Public Schools. All right, thank you. Okay. Further questions at this time? Thank you, Brian. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll look to our finance director, uh, David Lakefield, if you have some discussion on this. Mr. Mayor, I just have a few items, <coughs> excuse me, that I'd like to point out. Uh, when this project got to the stage that we are in, and we got the application from Epic. We forwarded some of this financial information to the company that helps us with our issuance of bonds. They have some TIF specialists that are taking a look at Epic's assumptions that they used in their modeling just to make sure that they're reasonable and, and uh, to make sure that the numbers uh, check out the way that they're presented. So um, as of this date, we haven't heard anything back good or bad from them. Uh, PFM would also be the ones who would assist us in the issuance of bonds for this project. Uh, this is something that is new in the, the Blue and Broadway project. We did not issue bonds uh, for that project. The, the developer funded it and they are recouping their investment uh, through the, the tax incentive. Uh, this will be a little bit different. We'll go out and issue the bonds and re recover that uh, payment for the bonds using the tax increment. So it's a little bit different. Uh, this will be the second TIF district if all goes well. So but I definitely would stand for any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Lakefield. Uh, just for clarification on, on the respect to new, it's new for mine, not for the most part, but this is a process that has been used uh, very successfully in other communities around North Dakota. Am I correct on that? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, that is correct. And Epic themselves has done a number of projects in a number of communities throughout North Dakota where they've utilized this method of financing for new development as well as some redevelopment projects. And this is something that's been around for uh, quite a few years, uh, just something that's new uh, to Minot. Questions for our finance director at this time. 
we think of any, we'll, uh, we'll bring you back up. Uh, at this time, I would look to our folks from Epic. I guess if uh, Mr. Blake Nybakken wants to uh, start us off. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, thank you very much. Uh, Blake Nybakken with Epic Companies. Um, very excited to be here today. Uh, I think Brian and, and Dave did a really good job about what we're planning to do with the, the M building, um, but that is to completely rehabilitate it. Um, it's in pretty rough shape right now, as some of those pictures indicated, and I'm sure some of you have seen uh, in going by. And what we wanna do is turn it from what is a potential liability into um, a property that is again contributing not only to the city and to the vibrancy of downtown, but on the tax rolls as well. Um, I think when we acquired the property uh, earlier this year and last year, um, I think we got three years of the uh, unpaid property taxes uh, paid at closing, and I think that's, um, you know, it, it was not in good standing, so there, there was a few challenges in even acquiring the property, but, um, you know, we want to bring it back to life, and we're excited about that. Um, I think when you get into the financials of it, um, you know, at its current assessed value of roughly $500,000, um, it's just over $9,000 a year is, is what it's contributing it based on that value. And when we are complete with it, um, we're generally conservative in nature with our modeling, um, and it's going to be nearly a $15 million project, which should bring in close to $250,000 annually. So not only are we going to be, we're projecting that we'll be paying more in annual taxes throughout the term of the TIF, um, but then once that term expires um, and we've paid for all of the improvements, um, that it's going to be substantially more than that. Um, a little bit about the project. Um, we are specializing in mixed-use buildings, so this will have a commercial component to it. The first two floors are going to be roughly 9,000 square feet of office or retail space. Um, we are going to introduce underground parking into the building. Um, we figured out a way how to get cars in with our civil and structural engineers, so we're going to have about 11 spaces in the basement, um, depending on what happens with the vault that's down there right now. Um, so we'll have some surface, some underground parking. Uh, we're looking at 31 uh, residential apartments on floors three through six, and then we will have approximately eight condos for sale on floors seven and eight. Um, some amenity space in the basement as well. We're looking at an exercise room down there and a little bit of uh, um, uh, just kind of uh, amenity space for the residential and commercial tenants. So um, excited about those things, uh, and again, just bringing it to life, and I think in a time when there's gonna be some buildings that are coming offline with the exciting new hospital coming online in a different part of town, I think this would be a good way to inject a little bit of uh, life and vibrancy into that area and kind of help fill that void, hopefully. Um, let me look at a couple of my notes here to see if I'm missing anything. Um, but yeah, again, I, I think the TIF, uh, in terms of, of how it applies to this building, um, I think it's a really great way to leverage private investment to, again, take what could eventually be a liability if nothing happened with that building and turn it into a, a producing uh, property in town and, again, just bring it back to life and help revitalize that whole area. Um, I, I think the TIF is critical, critical for this project. Um, it is a big undertaking, the asbestos abatement, um, the demolition component of it. Um, it's a big project, and I, I think it's very critical for this project and moving forward. So, um, yeah, I just uh, thank you for your consideration. Open to any questions that you have about the project, and uh, we're looking forward to working through the process on this. So, Mr. Nybach, and what uh, what's the time frame? Assuming all of this were to proceed as planned, uh, what's your time frame for a turnaround on productivity of the building again? Yeah, so we've been working with um, our consultants. Um, Ackerman Esfold has been doing all the design work on it. Um, they've got a demolition plan that's almost ready to hit the streets if it hasn't hit the streets yet. Um, so we'd be ready to roll in June, um, if not sooner. I mean, I, I think if, if, if things go as planned and we uh, look at an approval potentially in May, um, we'd be ready to get going. Um, and I, it's probably a 14 to 16 month project based on our estimates right now. So fall of 23, we could have that building hopefully open. 
Thank you, sir. Any questions? Alderwoman Olson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Steinbach, in the, our, the last project that we partnered with Epic, uh, the apartments were low to moderate income, but that was different financing. Yep. Um, I assume that these are market rate apartments? Yep, these are planned to be market rate apartments, correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Other questions for Mr. Nybakken at this time? Alderman Patagula. Just more of a comment. Uh, I'm just very impressed that you're undertaking this investment. And uh, I, I just can't say enough good about the idea of rehabilitating this building. It's an iconic structure for the community, uh, visible from just about every place. So it'd be nice to get that big M up there and lit and, and rotating, if possible, even. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's been a, a foundation of downtown and of the entire community. Um, on a more personal note, my first professional office was in there back in 1989, huh. and uh, it lasted for two years till the government kicked us all out of there. <laughs> and I still have some very fond memories of that building. It's a very good, solid building if it's uh, asbestos abated and upgraded. And the location is just priceless, and the views are wonderful. And yeah. again, it, it really is the anchor uh, to downtown. It's it's the iconic structure for the community, and I wish you the best of luck with the project. I think this is something that the community really could use. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the building is in a sad state of disrepair, and I wish we could have made it our city hall, but it just wasn't affordable for us. Um, if you can make it affordable, if you can turn a profit on it, that would be fantastic, because it is a structure worth saving. It means a lot to the community and to me personally. Yeah. So I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate that. And we do intend on, on getting a, a big M lit back up on top of the building again. Um, there's a process uh, through city staff of uh, going about that. And, and we did assure Dr. Balmers that we won't be trying to take the one off of the scoreboard at the football stadium. So it'll be a new sign if it goes back up. <laughs> Other questions for Mr. Nybakken at this time? Mr. City Manager. Not really a question for Mr. Nybakken, but just some, some general comments that maybe some of the public that's listening may may be asking, and, and that is, what is the financial commitment, what's being asked for at this point? So uh, the TIF application that we've received is for $2.5 million for a 20-year TIF, uh, with 90% of that being committed by the city uh, to pay off bonds, to pay off the 2.5, so 2.5 million. So as our finance director stated, the request is, is that the city would issue the bonds in our name and then this would be paid. And so how this would work is this isn't a tax abatement. So I don't want this to be confused as a tax abatement. We're not forgiving future taxes to be paid by the developer. Actually, Epic would make all the, all the tax payments, including the, the tax for the new development. But the TIF would allow the city to capture those taxes, both from the school district, the county, the county as well as the park district. And then that money would be used to pay off the bonds that the city is investing to make this project work. And so um, I just want to be very clear on that again. Uh, and then there'll be a 90-10 split on this. So 90% of these property tax revenues would come to the city to pay off those debts. And then the 10% would be distributed to the different property tax and entities, just as it has always been. And again, if the numbers pan out and are verified by PFM, uh, even from day one of the TIF of being on this, um, the, the tax revenue to these different tax entities would more than double immediately based off of this investment. Now, scaling back more generally, um, I think this is an important development for our community. This is a development that we're seeing uh, through communities throughout the, uh, throughout the country. Uh, we're, we're all dealing with labor, labor force issues right now, and we're basically competing uh, as communities across the country for two specific demographics throughout the country. Uh, the first one is the re retiring baby boomer generation who uh, have been successful throughout their careers, uh, have developed their nest eggs for retirement, and are looking for communities to settle down in, in some cases maybe even opening up a secondary business uh, career, uh, owning small shops and those kinds of things. It's amenities like this that are attractive to that baby boomer generation. Uh, for communities. These are developments that we're seeing in areas like uh, downtown Des Moines, downtown Kansas City, those kinds of things. The second big group that a lot of us are probably competing more aggressively for, and that's uh, the millennial generations and after, that those younger generations, those younger workforces. And we're seeing increasingly that those generations are not wanting to own the single family home with a white picket fence out in the urban suburbs. They're wanting to return back to the downtowns and they're driving a, a revitalization of downtowns throughout the country. Unfortunately, they're a smaller in number than our baby boomer generation, which is one of the largest generations in American history. 
So the developments like this are crucial for Minot for the foreseeable future to maintain sustainability and to compete for these large demographics throughout our country that everybody is competing for. And so I appreciate the investment of EPIC in, into our community. And, uh, and I think this is important on, on multiple levels, not to even mention uh, the impact this will have in our downtown as we continue to try and revitalize that as the heart of our community and, uh, and continuing to support uh, an, an economically vibrant uh, area of our community um, that continues to play a major role for our future. So, Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Any other questions for Mr. Nybakken at this time? Thank, Thank you, you. And I would either look to Mr. Shockley or uh, Mr. Burning at this time if you have anything more to add. <laughs> Mr. City Manager. At the risk of uh, putting Mr. Burning on the spot, I do have a question for Mr. Burning, <laughs> and that is, uh, this is a company that has long time roots uh, to Minot and has been doing these types of projects throughout the state. And I, I guess I was just curious as to what has changed that Epic is now interested in, in taking on now three major projects within our community. Is that the end of the question? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burning. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm Todd Burning. Um, as most of you know, I, I'm from here and uh, I've done as much as I can to help Minot and it, it's, it's still home. Uh, I, I'm bullish on Minot. You know, we, we like you know, everybody else uh, track numbers and uh, you know, after the flood, uh, you know, when things got uh, what they did, just been kind of patient and, and really just working through and, until we could uh, do it. And, and you know, frankly, uh, you know, there's a couple of things that made sense to us, um, really uh, three, three things. And you know, number one is Trinity moving forward, you know, healthcare, big part, um, you know, and, and then the education and, and the school bond. Um, and when that went as overwhelmingly as it did, that was really a, a, a good signal for a lot of our investors as well. And, and, and please remember, a lot of our investors over the years have come from the Minot area. There just hasn't been an opportunity to, to do that here. And, and uh, you know, the base doing their thing is huge and obviously Minot State moving forward to it. You know, th those are the big signals. And, and, and you know, after the riots and everything else in the bigger cities, you know, North Dakota is in a good spot. If it has air service and education, um, the numbers are looking good. Uh, people are, are moving and changing how they do business, and, and uh, Minot can be a big piece of that, no question about it. And we'd love to continue to work with economic development and, and move forward. That's really it. I mean, uh, you know, as I've said in the past, you know, annually we have anywhere from, you know, three to eight million dollars. Um, coming right out of this area that's now going to stay. Uh, a lot of our investors are very excited about putting money back into Maya. Thank you, Mr. Burning. At this time, uh, we've, we've uh, heard everything from the presentations. We're not making a motion tonight, but this would be an opportunity for discussion on the information before us or uh, anything else uh, or other questions that you may have. Alderman Pitt. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Again, I'll just echo the comments of everyone. I think this is an exciting project. Um, like I say, when you break down the numbers simply, where that building was headed for the next 20 years, you're looking to capture about $187,000 in, in property tax revenue for our community. And that's if it didn't fall down or become dilapidated or come back to the county. And and, and like I say, if, if projections are hold true, um, property tax, um, delivered from that property will exceed what we would have collected in those 20 years in the first year back online. So uh, again, just from a return on investment standpoint, becoming a community partner and working with with uh, people that are willing to invest in our community, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good project, it's a good tool in the toolbox that has probably been underutilized um, in our community to this point. Um, and, and I'm glad that we're stepping forward with it and, and embracing it, so. Other discussion? I will uh, just add perhaps on some insight to some questions that I've had regarding TIF districts. And uh, one of the comments 
that I had received is 20 years. 20 years is just too long. And I agree, 20 years has been way too long for that building to be empty. I think most of this is understanding what TIF is and how it works. And once you start looking at the numbers and see the benefits that we're actually going to capitalize better as taxing entities than what we have been and what we would have been had Epic not stepped up and took on this project. And also what is coming down the road in terms of investment, not only from Epic, but to the community itself and realizing a better benefit in bringing that building back onto the tax roll. Then you also take a look at the tertiaries on what likely will follow. What sits right next door is a parking ramp that's right next to City Hall and the likelihood of then the revitalization of, well, finally realizing the, the full uh, potential for development on that parking ramp and what happens to sit one block to the, to the north of that is the central parking ramp. There is a tremendous amount of opportunity that comes with the redevelopment of the Big M with City Hall going downtown and then all of the rest of the facilities coming online. Uh, all in the time frame of coming online about the time that Trinity will be getting ready to move out to its beautiful new campus in Southwest Minot and tasking that next uh, big piece of redevelopment. So uh, I'm very supportive because what this really truly is is addressing a blight issue that otherwise would fall to the taxpayers at a much much, much higher cost. Uh, I would encourage anybody who has questions about TIF to look at the numbers, because the numbers are the answer to why this makes sense. I will leave my comments there. Uh, final comments before we move on. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Alderman Ross, sorry. <laughs> I have a question for Blake or for Todd, whoever, just a, uh, could you guys do this project without a TIF? Mr. Burney. I could give you a long answer or just say no. It, it really, um, you know, the, the abatement and, uh, you know, the removal, demolition and, and things like that um, are a little over $3 million. You know, and so the, the TIF isn't even covering that. Um, you know, so we're working through that, and, and as PFM goes through it, I mean, you know, this is, we're about singles and doubles. We really are. We're not about home runs, and that's very evident in the numbers, but it does not pay for getting everything out of there. There's no question about that. Thank you. Yeah. Just a, a follow up, and, and Todd, I know uh, your your pride in mine, it is goes beyond compare. I yep. mean, the, the work you're doing in mine, it's so I look forward to learning more about TIFs. Um, I look forward to learning more about um, this project. I think it's, um, you know, we were going to turn it into City Hall, but it was going to be double the price of what you're doing. So I yeah. think that, that says a lot about having private, private investment in a in an area downtown. So. Yeah, and it's it's you know to you know full disclosure, we're lucky. We have a, a guy on our team that's done some of this before, uh, urban redevelopment with taller buildings and uh, you know he said we're not going to replace it we're going to redo it and that definition has really been uh, carried through and what's made it feasible um, you know you look at the black curtain um, that can be done one way for a couple million dollars more or the way we are doing it for a couple million dollars less I mean there's just some big decisions and and getting everything out of there you you, you restart a lot of things and and so he he's got a Nick is his name he, he's got a, a really good handle on this and when the mayor asked, uh, when are we ready to roll, we're holding him back. He's ready, you know, very seriously he is, and it's gonna be a lot of pride for him too. Just real quickly, just uh, talk about, you, it's, you've got more experience with, with TIF mm -hmm. than really, I bet, combined up here on the dais. Talk about what's happening or what, it, what results are you seeing in other communities where you've utilized this tool to help yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, the the company that has really taken and the community that has taken TIF to the next level uh, is Fargo and Kilbourne. You know, you know, you went downtown Fargo 25 years ago, and you know, if you you know the deal, and you go there now, and it's crazy. And 20 years is a long time. You know, and a lot of those TIFs are 15 to 25 years, and now they're all coming off. 
and it's it's doing really well for the city of Fargo. Um, our start was in West Fargo. Um, John Shockley, who is the city attorney for West Fargo, um, looked to redevelop you know their their downtown area, and most people are like where in the heck is West Fargo's downtown? Um, it, it was having some issues, you know, poverty issues and things like that, and. Uh, and him and the economic development director came to us and you know we've done, I don't know, at six to eight projects in West Fargo alone. Uh, we were doing one in Grand Forks and some smaller communities as well have been a part of it. Um, but you know, when the mayor said it's in the numbers and or you know, it, it is, it, 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 it's just taking that, raising the value and, and keeping everybody that's, you know, budgeting to that tax number online and then growing that and that's you know the 90 10 helps that even more thank you yeah alderman jancer thank you mr mayor <clears throat> um, i think alderman ross asked a very important question um because i remember um in 2008 when um i was on the council we passed the the documentation that um brian uh, presented earlier that was the foundation for this. Um, and it wasn't used. You know, we um, didn't have the right circumstances, didn't have people uh, seeking it. Um, we, it. It just wasn't used. It laid in the toolbox um, all of this time until, until Blue on Broadway. But I, but I remember one of the key things that, that um, was part of the original discussion as we passed it was that um, really projects that were contemplated that that would not be possible but for the use of the TIF financing. And so I think um, Alderman Ross's question is, uh, is uh, a good one and the right one and I think uh, Mr. Burning's answer is the right one. And so um, I'm very interested to see this, you know, move forward as we go through the process. Thank you. Mr. Lakefield. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, that is also part of the analysis that we have looked at as well as what PFM is doing uh, for the city. Uh, because we will be issuing debt, they want to evaluate the assumptions used in the model to make sure that they will generate enough cash to be able to service the debt. Um, but also they are looking at the other end of the spectrum that would this development be possible if the TIF uh, financing was not utilized. So it's kind of this sweet spot in the middle where they have to be able to generate enough cash to satisfy the debt but uh, not, uh, not to have so much that the, the TIF district would not be needed. Other comments at this time? This issue will be back before us again in May. It is going before the other taxing, taxing entities for either letters of support or contemplation. Uh, at that time, within the 30 days, it will be back before us. Uh, and I would certainly encourage if uh, any of the elected or um, staff members or members of the community have questions about TIF, uh, you can certainly reach out to the city manager or to uh, our community development director or folks from even from EPIC uh, to talk more about that and uh, really kind of dig into the numbers on why this works uh, in the circumstance for this project. <clears throat> 